guys. Oh. How are we? I have been feeling like an ogre's asshole for a good five or six days now. I'm not gonna lie to you. But we are pushing through and I, I just feel like something has been in the air. So I'd love to know how you guys have been and what the vibes are like. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about heartbreak. Heartbreak, heartbreak, heartbreak. Heartbreak is one of those things. <sighs> to keep it short and sweet, I have been through the absolute fucking ringer. I have experienced all types of heartbreak. Um... And I have always been extremely like in tune with my emotions and stuff. So I just, I feel, I feel, I feel a lot. Um, and heartbreak is one of those things that it's so important, you know. Strength doesn't come from easiness. Strength comes from hard hardships. And I think this episode is important for anyone going through a heartbreak, whether it be your first heartbreak, whether it be your third the thing with heartbreak is, is it never actually gets easier. You just get better at navigating it. And one of my favorite quotes, and I want to start, start the episode off with this one because it's a strong one. Who you become and the lessons you learn through hardships of life are more important than your temporary feelings. So when you're going through heartbreak, it's it is such a roller coaster and it is so hard to feel and like join the dots in your mind but you have to remember that in the moment everything is going to feel like shit has hit the fan and and your life is over but when you go through it okay and you look back at it that quote is going to make a lot of sense to you because i have learned so much through the heartbreaks that I've been through. And what's crazy as well is every heartbreak I've been through have been completely different, okay? But all, all heartbreak. And it's so crazy. Like if I think about it too long, I can actually feel my heart hurting. It's crazy that heartbreak literally feels like heartbreak. Your heart hurts. Um, and in many ways, and this is another thing about heartbreak that I, I love to look at it in this way because I think there's always two ways of looking at things in life. There's, you know, a bit more of a positive way and then there's a bit more of a negative way. And heartbreak is a, is a beautiful testament to how much love you can have within you. It's the same with grieving. And grieving, obviously, I'm going to, I'm speaking more about heartbreak in a romantic way for this podcast, but grieving and heartbreak are definitely tied in one. And sometimes when you're actually breaking up with a person, it's still, there's still a grieving process that comes with it. And I've always liked to think that that grieving is just a testament to how much love you've had for a person and how much love you can give. And that is rare. And and some of us are re find it really, really, really hard to love. So if you have been able to love and you've been able to give love, give yourself a little pat on the back. That's a beautiful thing. And even though the pain hurts, you have to say, wow, I have a lot of love in me and a lot of love to give. And that in itself is pretty special. So let's talk about Heartbreak Alley. That's what I'm going to call it because we'll start <coughs> with the first heartbreak, okay? Let's call this guy Jude because I've been obsessed with Jude Bellingham recently. So we'll call him Jude. So Jude was my first, I'm going to say first love because either way, at that time, that was what I thought love was. Looking back, it was more of the puppy love, but it still was my first proper experience of looking at a person and being like, I am so in love with you. And like, there's nothing, your flaws, your imperfections, I love it all and I want it all, okay? So that was, it was my version of love at the time. Anyways, Jude and I dated for a year and um, when we broke up, I was crushed, okay? I actually felt like my world was gonna end. 
I was so distraught and heartbroken and confused. And the first heartbreak, okay, will usually give you an indication of your weak spot in life, okay? I.e., it usually triggers your biggest trauma. And so I remember I was 16, 17, and it sounds so crazy because 16, 17 is so young, but I'm telling you, when I felt, I felt. Like, I've been feeling since I was a, a young girl. Like, I've always really, really felt so many emotions on such a deep level. It's, so it sounds like I'm little and I don't know what I'm talking about, but I swear to you, I really knew what I was feeling, okay? And it was really real feelings. Um... But I remember being so devastated to my mom and I was just like, I feel, I, I literally felt like something, like something was getting ripped out of my body and I was trying to hold on to it so bad, okay? And she explained to me that when my parents got divorced, there was a time that I couldn't see my mom and there was a time that my, I was taken away from my mom. And that right there was the trauma because it has been an issue and is still an issue in my bit more of an adult life of when I love something and I love it hard, as soon as I feel it pulling away, my body goes into this fight or flight response. And I, my body actually feels it more than my mind and heart feel it because the body does not forget trauma. So... When she was explaining these things to me, whilst I was going through my breakup with Jude, it started to make a lot of sense of like, this feeling is a trauma because this it, it's triggered the feeling of not being able to see my mum and not having my mum around and the person that I love the most getting pulled away from me. And it, it totally made sense because even when I was younger, you know, I'd be at school and if my mum was one minute late, to pick me up, I'd go crazy. I was terrible with sleepovers because I'd get homesick. Like I was so overly, overly attached. And that bred into an anxious attachment style, right? Because when I love something, I wanna keep it close. I wanna keep it close, I wanna hold on to it. But that isn't life. And one of the biggest lessons I had to learn is you have to let things come, you have to let things go, and you absolutely cannot hold on to anything. So, that was a huge, huge lesson and it also made me recognize these flaws in myself at a young age that of course didn't make sense. And I'm, this has been years and years and years of, of working on my abandonment issues because that right there is my biggest childhood trauma. But that first relationship with Jude really made me realize my weak, weak spot and also my attachment style, because we all have different attachment styles. So some people have anxious attachment styles, some people have avoidant, that no matter what, they avoid emotions, they avoid confrontation, they avoid expressing themselves, usually because avoidance um, are self, self-soothers. So they always think that they, within themselves, can solve their own problems, and any problems in life come from external people. That's why they resist love and they resist opening up. I, on the other hand, um, I love you, I love you, I love you, I want to be with you. Uh, come come be with me, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? I'm on the other spectrum and I've been really, really working on finding the secure middle ground and having a secure att attachment style of letting it come, letting it go. If it feels right, if it's right, keep it around. If it goes, it goes. You know what I mean? And being secure in yourself to let love in give love, receive love, etc. But that's honestly a topic for another day. Let's go back to Judy. Um, so Jude taught me a lot because that was my first indication of getting to know myself and being like, okay, I have some abandonment problems and this is an issue that will reoccur unless I slowly start to work on it. And honestly, still working on it because the, the the childhood trauma really affects you and you have to do a lot of inner child healing and a lot of navigating and talking and blah, 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 blah. But I'm very mindful of it. So nowadays, if I'm speaking to a guy or whatever and I feel like there's a push and pull going on, I'm much better at navigating and soothing myself through that um, so that I don't give into my abandonment trauma because 
One thing I'm a really big believer of is in order to heal wounds, you have to stop touching them. And I excused myself so much because of my abandonment issues. I'm just like, it's just my abandonment issues. But it's fine because it's my abandonment issues. I, I became a walking abandonment issue, you know, and you can't do that. It's a part of me. I make friends with it. It, it lingers in my brain. But I very kindly say, shush. So that that was Jude and that was that usually is what happens with your first heartbreak it 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 is the beginning of the character building okay moving on to Keith cuz i'm also obsessed with Keith Powers let's just full send on the guys that i'm obsessed with so moving on to Keith Keith and i um were together for 5 years on and off okay and this was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful relationship, right? There was never any cheating. There was never any like distrust or anything like that. I am so grateful that at my age, I had such a healthy representation of what a partnership should be like, what compromising means, what um, communication means, what commitment means, because commitment takes courage. Um, it takes courage to stay loyal to a person and to ride the waves with a person and to put the person in front of you, blah de blah de blah But um, Keith was a very, Keith was more on the sensitive side. And that made me feel a lot safer because um, it felt like home, you know. Um, I'm such a sensitive person. So when people around me are sensitive, it makes me feel safe, you know. And that was Keith to a T. Keith was my safe person. And Jude was the very heartbreaking heartbreak, like the very traumatizing, um, painful heartbreak. Keith was a very sad heartbreak because it was tied into grieving a little bit of losing my best friend. And um, it was very sad because I had to do something that I never wanted to do, but that is, and I've said it before, but that is a really, really important lesson that sometimes you have to put yourself before other people. And I didn't want to do that. And I held off and I held off and I held off. And the issue when you do that and you keep putting a person in front of you the whole time is you actually start to resent the person and you start to resent yourself because within that you, you can't really live authentically. And I, you know, Within that, I struggled with sex drive, I struggled with my weight, my binge eating, my job, my work, everything in my life was all over the place because I was exuding so much love to one person, but zero to myself. And that ending was very, very hard, but extremely transformative because it made me level up as a woman. And I see like, childhood to girlhood to teenage girlhood to womanhood it's like there's levels okay and I knew at that point the breakup went on for a while it was like a two-month breakup because women as well we have a lot of faith and they always say like women tap out before the breakup even happens and I really do believe that's true because we we hold on to hope and faith and we give it another chance and we we voice things, we give it another chance, another chance, and we hold on to like what could be. Just like we fall in love with potential the whole time. It's the same when you're in a relationship and you're like, should I break up with the guy? Should I not? We're, we're constantly thinking of what it could be and the potential and the, the light at the end of the tunnel. But sometimes the light at the end of the tunnel will not come. And with Keith, it got to a point where I was begging him for a light at the end of the tunnel, but he couldn't give it to me. And so in that moment, I had to make the choice of, do I suffer in hopes for the light at the end of the tunnel? Or do I for once in my life put myself before this person, put my worth and what I deserve and my needs before this person? And I did it. And that was heartbreaking because it was very, very sad. It was a sadness. And of course, you know, no contact had to come into play, which I struggle with so much because I do agree that in order to get over a person, 
you have to take time away because obviously when you're speaking to a person every day, there's a, a dependency that you build up and it's so natural, okay? It's like a dependency that you build up with this person and I love the speaking every day. I love that kind of stuff. I love getting into a routine because women as well, we crave consistency. We love consistency. So I loved having that routine of morning, good night, like, what are you doing? That's cool, da, 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 da. Loved that. So when that was taken away, it was really, it really felt like grieving a person, but a person that was still around. Um, and yeah, the no contact was extremely, extremely hard, but I was very, very proud of myself. And I'm very proud of myself because still to that day, that was the one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. But it was the most rewarding in the sense of I learned a very big lesson. Sometimes you have to put yourself before others. And sometimes you have to be, it's not even selfish. It's what you deserve. And knowing that this person can't give you what you deserve and need. And that is not a bad representation on them. It's just what happens. And it's just life like two people go like that and it happens all the time but that was a beautiful relationship and I only have love for Keith I absolutely actually Jude and Keith I freaking love them and they're still parts of my life they're like my family to me now but I remember at the time they were two very different heartbreaks but so um powerful in what they taught me and, and what I learned about myself um but yeah so for anyone that is going through that kind of heartbreak and you're struggling with the no contact, I feel you. It is really, really, really hard. And I don't necessarily believe like, you know, you have to just cut the person off. I think it's always important to check in because how can you go from speaking every single day, this person literally being your world and best friend to nothing? Like as if they don't even exist. That isn't human connection and that isn't human nature. We're bred to care. We're bre bred to love, you know? So I think if you're going through that and you want a message and you want to check in, do it. As long as you're doing it for the person and not for yourself. Because sometimes I would have found, I, sometimes I found myself, you know, wanting to check in just because I wanted a response. And that isn't healthy. You know, if you want something back from it, it's not really pure. If you want to just check in or if it's a birthday or whatever, and you just want to give that love, do it. Obviously, again, this is depending on how you guys broke up and blah, 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 and the context of the situation. But yeah, no contact is really, really hard. Um, but that was a transformative breakup with Keithy for sure. Um, and then from Keithy, I have had many heartbreaks and very questionable heartbreaks. Okay. So there was the ghoster that I, I honestly thought I was in love with. I, the guy, the guy was like a tornado. He came into my life. He just like, and then dipped. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? Okay, because it was the first time in my life I had ever been ghosted. Extremely, extremely humbling experience. But that level of rejection that the ghosting felt, even though it actually wasn't a rejection, but at the, t at the time, it really felt like a rejection. That in itself was so powerful because that forced me to sit with my feelings. I brought back all the abandonment issues. It made me question myself and lose all my self-worth. Um, but it was so monumentally powerful for me and for my self-growth and in terms of just building a thick skin and again understanding you can never control the actions of others. You can only control yourself and what you do with your emotions. Huge, 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 huge lesson. Ghosty um, just came in and, and, and made a whole, a whole tornado. And recently as well, like a couple months ago, whatever, I had another tornado come in. Like sometimes these guys come in from left field and they just fuck shit up and leave. And it is, it is the craziest thing. But looking back at it, it's like people really do come into your life for a reason. Sometimes they're for a season, sometimes they're there for a couple months, sometimes they're for a lifetime. But these people are such catalysts for change in your life. That's why just nothing happens by coincidence. I'm so certain of it because all the like little situationships I've had in between, and I've had like three, okay, they have all 
just fucked shit up, but in the most magnificent way for me and my self growth, you know. Um, and that that that's a whole different kind of heartbreak because it's a very questionable heartbreak. It makes you question yourself, and it also you know, it's sad because you don't really go into things. Well, I don't go into things being like, ha, this is going to end in six months. You know, like I don't go into things with that mindset. I go into things of like, could I build with this person? I don't go into things being like, this is my future husband and I visualize our wedding and all that stuff either. But I always think like, could this build into commitment? Could I see myself with this guy in the future? And I ride with that. And the three situationships after Keith, I had that in my head. But they all went to shit, okay? The biggest takeaway from those three, let's call them, let's call them Bob. No, we've got Ghosty. We've got um, Pedro. Don't know, I was just feeling a bit Spanish. And we've got Bob. Ghosty, Pedro, and Bob, okay? They, they came in and... The, the one biggest lesson I learned from that is people can only meet you as far as they've met themselves. I never understood it before. These three guys that all were not capable of giving me the love that I needed, like actually physically were not capable. People can only meet you as far as they've met themselves. They don't have the depth in them yet. And that's why I couldn't get what I wanted from them because people can't give you what they don't have, you know? And there in that statement alone, there is no bad blood because when you start to think about it in that way, you don't take things personally because people can only meet you as far as they've met themselves. And if anything, all three of them, actually besides Bob, Bob can, the other two, they're still part of my life. I still check in on them and I love and adore them, okay? Because again, they taught me so much. It was meant to start, it wasn't meant to last and people can only meet you as far as they've met themselves. And I pray for them that one day they'll be able to give more love, receive more love and learn their own and layer themselves. It's so important, you know? So that's on heartbreak. Heartbreak comes in so many different forms. Um, and ultimately you have to thank the people that have hurt you the most because they are the catalyst for change in your life. They help you with your character development. They make you question yourself and look at yourself differently. They make you understand what you could have done better. And ultimately they make you a better person. You get hotter, you get stronger you get wiser, you get more enlightened, you have more boundaries. Like there are so many ways that without Jude, Keith, Ghosty, Pedro and Bob, I, I would not be the woman I am today. Woman, I find it weird calling myself a woman. I still feel like I'm a baby, but I technically am a woman at 24, I think, or like a a little woman, you know? Those five, they're like the five Avengers. They came in and they have helped me so much throughout the pain and the heartbreak and the, 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 the traumatizing feelings at times, I would not be the woman I am today. And you will get there as well. There will come a point where every person that has ever caused you pain, because also it's, it's never enemies that cause you pain. They always start out as someone you love. They always start out as a friend or a romantic person. Like it, it's never, they're never enemies from the get-go. And you will get to a point where you can look back and you will be so thankful and grateful for everything that has happened. And now when I look back at all these things, besides the, besides the two more recent ones, that obviously there's still healing and work to be done. But the other ones, it's like I really genuinely only have love for them. And I remember mainly just the fun that was had and the nice moments because when the pain subsides and you can look at things in a clearer lens, a lot of beauty to take from getting to know a person and connecting, whether it goes good or whether it goes bad. My, th those are some of my takeaways on heartbreak. And of course, again, this is more heartbreak aimed towards the romantic point of view, but still just as important. And for anyone going through heartbreak, just know it will be okay. And 
those feeling those words will not mean anything to you because trust me like when i was going through heartbreak if someone said it's going to be okay i honestly wanted to sock them in the face because it doesn't feel like it's going to be okay but the truth of the matter is it will actually be so much more than okay you were fine before them you're going to be even greater without them like it's as simple as that i really hope you guys enjoyed this little segment on heartbreak and i will see you guys in my next episode Mwah.